So about a week or so ago, I was up late at night as I am prone to be because I can't sleep. And I sent out a tweet that said something to the effect of, if we can put a camera in every doggy daycare that allows pet parents to log in on their phone and see what their pets are doing, then why can't we put a camera in every classroom in the country so that parents of the children in that classroom can log in, not to spy on their kids, but to see exactly what they are being taught. And I sent this tweet out at about 1, 1 a.m. in the morning. I, I, I since accidentally deleted it. It was a total accident. I was really mad about it because it got like 2 million views. I was really upset with myself. But I sent this tweet out in the middle of the night. And by the time I had woken up the next morning, there was like a leftist uproar in my Twitter about how dare I suggest that we spy on teachers and oh my god, I want a horrible Orwellian state. And, and because the left was so pissed off, I mean, I have never, this is the God's honest truth, I have never seen this negative a reaction to an idea. And I was like, aha, I'm absolutely on the right track. If the left hate this idea and just have this visceral negative reaction to it. So I put up a little replacement thread. We're going to go through it now so that you can get a sense of exactly what I'm proposing and why I'm proposing it. There are cameras in doggy daycare for pet parents. Daycares have cameras that let parents see what's going on with their kids. There are cameras on school buses. Why isn't there a camera in every classroom for parents to see what their kids are being taught, hashtag cameras in classrooms. Here's the idea of cameras in classrooms. Public schools are paid for by the taxpayer. They are not a private space. And before I get people arguing in my comments saying, well, Carlin, we would need to get permission from the parents. No, you don't. No, you don't. This has already been decided by the Supreme Court. I don't care what your school policy is. Your school policy actually does not trump the Supreme Court of the United States. This has already been decided by the Supreme Court. Two, put a camera filming every teacher in every classroom in America. Three, let the parents of the kids in the class see exactly what their children are being taught. If teachers are doing amazing, they have nothing to worry about. If teachers don't want parents to see what they're teaching, there's a reason for it. Why would they fight so hard to keep you out of the classroom? What are they afraid of? Teachers have already been broadcasting their classes live on the internet for a full year, and some teachers are demanding to continue it. This is no different than what Cameras in Classrooms proposes. They're already doing it. They even already have the equipment. We have the ability to film state employees. Police wear body cameras. Teachers are state employees. They can also be filmed while doing their jobs. Teachers do not have the right to privacy or to free speech when they are acting in their official capacity. And that too has already been decided by the Supreme Court. Already done. Already settled has already been decided. And then if you want to go to this thread, I have a couple more things in here and it's pinned to the top of my Twitter. But I bring this up because this Rhode Island mother says she could face a lawsuit from her school or from her child's school rather simply because she was asking questions. You know what would solve this? You know what would make all this unnecessary? Cameras in classrooms where everything is recorded because I keep trying to tell you guys like the teachers are not your friend the teachers are not playing on your team the teachers get really pissed off whenever parents red pill their students they get pissed off when parents are asking questions we know that some teachers are going so far as to build curriculum that they send home and tell the parents they're teaching that curriculum but instead they're teaching other stuff that they're not even telling the parents about they are actively trying to subvert the system and this is just another example of that strategy so we're going to read this article and we're going to see why this stay at home mother might get sued over asking questions at her kids school but before we get into that, so you guys might notice, I'm wearing a, a new Don't Tread On Me hat. I'm also wearing a still Caucasian 
t-shirt? And you might ask yourself, where did I get these awesome products? And the answer is bringammo.com. I love bringammo.com. They are one of my favorite sites. They've got so much cool stuff. They're constantly coming out with like limited edition, cool merchandise. Let me just show you. Here's the still Caucasian shirt that I'm wearing. Of course, we can get it in the classic Coca-Cola red or black. They also have like tumblers. They have sweatshirts. They, they published this one right after I broke the story about Coke's Be Less White training. So of course, I had them send me one. We've also got this nice Don't Tread On Me hat that they sent me recently actually i think within the last day or so they just launched this fauci lied t-shirt they launch limited edition t-shirts all the time go and check out their site it's so 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 awesome you guys know i don't shill things unless i actually use them and i was actually buying stuff from bring bring ammo before I ever started shilling for them. Like this is just like a nice little bonus that I get to show for them on my channel. So what you can do if you want 10% off your entire order is when you go to check out, you get your nice Fauci lied shirt or what have you. What you do is you go into the discount code section and you just put in my first name, K-A-R-L-Y-N. You put that in the promo code and you are going to get, bing, you're going to get 10% off your entire order from bringammo.com just by putting my first name as a promo code. And so you're gonna support them and the great work that they're doing. And it also helps to support my channel, which of course I really appreciate. And you get awesome stuff. You're gonna get a cool Fauci Lied t-shirt or a still Caucasian t-shirt or any of the other awesome stuff that they have on their website, bringammo.com. Use Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N as the promo code and you'll get your little discount. All right, let's see What's going on with this Rhode Island mother? A Rhode Island mother said Wednesday that she could face a lawsuit for seeking information about critical race theory material that was being taught in her daughter's school. I wanted to speak out because I have to fight for my daughter's education and I'm in a special position. I don't have a job to lose because I'm a stay at home mom. My daughter is just starting out in school. So if I have to send her to private school, I will. And this, she's already making an amazing point because she is in a, a position to be able to speak out because she does not have a job to lose. And frankly, guys, if you are in a similar position and you are not speaking out at this point, I'm sorry, it's time to step up to the plate. You've got to get in the game. You've got to stop letting, uh, like, I mean, to be quite frank, I'm gonna be selfish for a second. I, I feel like people like me are being completely hung out to dry in terms of speaking up against this stuff, fighting back against it. You guys have no idea sometimes the amount of beatings that we take for being in front of this stuff. And it, it really pisses me off because if every stay at home mother if every stay-at-home mother that was worried about this stuff just spoke up today and said, no, you're not doing this to my children, this problem will be over in an instant. It would be over like that. There would be no more need for me to continue to badger you guys to speak up because the problem would be solved. If everyone who believed that critical race theory was garbage and it should not be in the schools did what this brave mother did, the fight would be over. It would be it. It would be done. You've got to dig down deep. You've got to do what you know is right. And I think it's really important for parents to start asking more questions because the more parents that ask more questions, the harder it will be for schools to retaliate against a lot of parents. I wonder if she's been watching my videos and listening to me rant about how conservatives need to do something to speak up. When Solis entered enrolled her daughter in school, she said she wanted to know if they were doing any anything with gender theory or anti-racism. She called the principal and was told that they don't refer to kids as boys and girls. I was also told that they refrained from using gender terminology in terms of anti-racism. I was told that kids in kindergarten are asked what they could have done differently at Thanksgiving, and that struck me as a way to shame children for their American heritage. After failing to get meaningful answers, Solis sought to see the curriculum for herself, which was a challenge. She had not yet gotten a copy of the curriculum after requesting it. Solis was advised by the school district to submit a public records request through the Access to Public Records Act. Upon receiving the information, Solis said she did not see any evidence of gender theory or anti-racism, but she knew it was being taught. So essentially, the school lied. The school lied. She, she submitted 
a perfectly reasonable request for information. Sometimes called, in like New Hampshire, they call this the right to know. You can you can ask what the schools are teaching and they have to give you that information. She did that and the school lied to her. They told her one thing on the phone and then another once she submitted this request for information. She continued to use the APRA system to seek answers to more of her questions. I have a lot of questions. I'm asking them. I wish that my questions would have been answered without having to do it this way, but they told me to do it with their own questions. They're teaching something that they're hiding from you. They're being opaque about it. Sola says the school district was scheduled to meet about possible legal action over her request. According to a local report, a school committee was considering a lawsuit to challenge her request. And we'll bring that up and take a quick look at it there. CRT curriculum has sparked a national controversy, blah, 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 blah. Let's take a look real quick. Rhode Island School Committee considers suing woman for public records request questioning critical race theory. This is off of a local website in Rhode Island. A school committee in Rhode Island is threatening to sue a woman for filing what they said were 160 separate records requests. Good for her, man. 160 requests. G Nicole, slow clap for Nicole. Slow clap for Nicole, the stay-at-home mom who took responsibility to do something and filed 160 separate information requests from her kid's school. However, the parent argues under state laws, the filing constitutes just one as they were filed within a 30-day period. Now the South Kingston mother of a kindergartner, Nicole Solis, is firing back. The town of Kingston initially demanded a bill, a $10,000 bill for records retrieval requited. They wanted to bill her $10,000 when she just wanted to know what her kid was being taught. You know what would have solved this? Cameras in classrooms. Cameras in classrooms would solve this entire affair. Oh my God. On Wednesday night, the South Kingston School Committee will meet with one of the agenda items listed as discussion slash action Filing lawsuit against Solis to challenge filing of over 160 APRA requests. Solis this week posted on the website Legal Insurrection, making her case for inquiring about questions with the school district that would not they would not answer as it pertained to curriculum, stating she could think of a dozen better ways her APRA requests could have been addressed. Wow. Wow. When I tell you guys, the schools aren't your friends, cameras in classrooms. Listen, there has got to be a way to film what teachers are teaching when you've been broadcasting on the internet for a full flipping year. They've already been broadcasting it live on the internet. Like what, I, what I'm hearing from conservative parents is like, I don't want my little darlings to be filmed all day. It is an invasion of their privacy. No, public schools are public places. And if you're, if you're consternation about this, if you care more about your little angel ending up on a video when they're already being videoed on their school buses, they're already being videoed at like if they play in a basketball game or if they're in a school play or recital, they're already being videoed in all of these circumstances. But you're upset about possibly them ending up on camera in the one circumstance that you might actually be able to find some useful information to make sure that your kids are not being taught that they're racist, you need to get your goddamn priorities straight. This is what I'm saying. You need to get your priorities straight. Cameras in classrooms would fix almost every single problem that we are dealing with in the educational system today. If you aren't willing to fight, you've got to stop whining. You've got to get in the game or frankly, Get out of the way of the people who are actually trying to fix this problem. All right, guys, that's all I've got. I'll see you soon.